Lately, I've been using a lot of color overlays in my design work for Pacers Gaming. I'll put some examples up on the screen right over here. And most of these have the kind of duotone look to them, but you don't have to do that. You could let the color bleed through. I just liked that imagery better for what I was working on. Nevertheless, pretty simple stuff using blending modes in Photoshop. I'm Spencer from Pixel and Bracket. Let's open up Photoshop and get started. So I have just a new canvas open here. It's 1920 by 1080 because that helps me make thumbnails. But it doesn't really matter. You can have whatever size open you need. I'm gonna pull in a photo going up to file down to place embedded. You can also just drag and drop a photo in. I think I have a couple downloaded here. We're gonna use this one right there. I believe that's gonna be the thumbnail image as well. So we're just gonna create what's in the thumbnail for the most part. All right, so I brought this guy in. You can scale him up and down when you're bringing him in, but no matter what, he's gonna be a smart object. Just hit enter to place him in there. He's a smart object, so we can scale him up and down with no worries about quality loss or anything like that. We've got this photo. I'm gonna add a quick color overlay, and I'm just gonna show you really quick what I would do. First, I'm gonna make a new rectangle out here. Uh, you can just go ahead and edit the fill right now if you want to, or you can just make a rectangle, and boy, that's, that's kind of screwing me up now. Photoshop uh, makes those rectangles from the center out, so you can do that, or you can hold Option or Alt and just create it from the corner over here. And I just wanna make sure it covers my canvas. Once I got that rectangle made, it creates a layer down here. See in the lower right, I got my layers. If I double click on the color part of the layer, the little thumbnail, it brings up my color picker and I can change this rectangle to anything I want. Because I've been using a lot of yellows, I'm gonna show you the yellow first. I'm gonna pick a nice saturated, bright yellow uh, for this first demonstration. We'll pick something darker later and I'll show you how I handle that. But the brighter colors tend to work more because for the most part what we're doing is replacing the whites of the image with this color. So what you can do now is play with the blending modes. And if you see in my layers panel over here, I have this normal drop down. These are my blending modes. And luckily in Photoshop, the latest version, it actually previews each of these blending modes as I scroll down through them, which is really nice. Now you notice some of these effects already give you that duotone-ish look um, or even monotone look. But what I'm gonna pick is multiply. Then what I wanna do is actually make this image black and white. So I'm gonna go up to adjustments. If you don't see this panel, you can go to window down to adjustments. It's gonna pop it open. And there's this little uh, black and white option here. I'm gonna create a new black and white adjustment layer. Now, if you have a lot of uh, layers in your document and you wanna link this to just this photo, because it'll make everything black and white underneath the photo, I'm gonna do that by holding option or alt and just clicking right between them to create a clipping mask. Okay, so we've got this look. Look, we've already got this sort of, uh, well, I don't know if this is mono, kind of do a tone, right? It's black and then yellow. Uh, but I wanna make it pop a little bit more. So one of the little adjustments that I put in there, if we go back to that panel, is actually curves. I'll bring open the curves. Curves used to really scare me. It's pretty easy. Basically it's saying, hey, anything that's black, make it black. Anything that's white, make it white in your image. And then from there you can sort of adjust. So if I take a point down here in my darker grays, right? If you look at this little, it's like a little graph and I pull this up, that means make my darker grays brighter. Does that make sense? If I pull this down up here that says, make my whitest whites darker. So the highlights are getting darker. That's how this guy works. So a lot of times what I do is, I definitely up the contrast of my image. I will pull up the darker parts of my image more because I really want that photo to pop. And now I can see that we've got a lot more contrast there. We're seeing a lot more of my color come through. And if you wanted to move this rectangle, you could to see the difference. And then if you wanted to turn off and on the black and white layer, you can do that. Um, if you really want to, you can actually put this all in a folder, we could duplicate this image down below or double click on it accidentally and exit out of that. Duplicate it by holding Option or Alt down below outside the group, so we'll collapse that group. It's still inside the group, we gotta make sure it's outside the group. 
So I'm gonna drag it down here, right there. Now that pop to the left, it's not indented anymore. It's outside the group. So I have this group on top of this photo, right? This group, if I add a little mask to it and I grab my little gradient tool, this is how I actually did the, uh, the thumbnail. And I'm gonna select this gradient right there. So basically, what I did was I created a little gradient on the mask. So I just painted that little gradient tool onto the mask. And this is the thumbnail image. I just wanted to show you that in case you were wondering exactly how to do what was in the thumbnail. So what I've done is I've created a mask here where on the white side of the mask, we can see the effect. On the left side of the mask, we see through the layer. In fact, if I turn off this background layer and turn off the picture underneath, you're gonna actually see transparency through that. So right now we only see the right half of this photo. And if I turn on the bottom of the photo, the bottom photo, uh, you'll see the left half of the photo, right? Does that make sense? If I turn off this effect up here, you actually see the whole just regular photo. All right, so that's how to handle that. Let's go ahead and turn off this here. And what we have now is essentially just the effect on top of the photo. I'm, in fact, I'm just gonna get rid of that and I'm gonna get rid of the background layer. So this is all we have right here. What if you want this guy to be darker? Well, we can double click on this and let's say I want it to be like a dark navy blue. Start to bring this down here. And Where did my photo go? Well, what you're doing when you have multiply as the blending mode is you're basically saying anywhere that there's white, replace it with this color. If I go down through my blending options, we're gonna see a lot of different things happening throughout my image. Now, one of the things I like is using overlay or soft light, um, even some of these others like screen or lighten, will basically apply that darker color to the shadows. And that kind of makes sense, right? You, if you apply a light color to the shadows, you're kind of gonna invert the image a little bit. And the way multiply goes, I'm actually applying a dark color to the whites of my image, which is gonna really darken my image. Now, that being said, I actually utilize this quite a bit to create backgrounds because now I can type text on top of it and it's gonna be relatively visible. But if you wanna maybe have this color be most of your image, but still be able to see the image, what I do is I actually duplicate this rectangle. So I'm gonna hold Option or Alt and duplicate it. Then with one of these, I, I don't know which one, maybe the top one, what I like to do is go into this, these modes again and maybe select something like screen. And so now I've got screen and I've got multiply. And, with the, and I actually think I keep the multiply on top. Yeah, that's what I do. So without the screen, it's a little darker with the screen, there's not much difference, but now I can take that multiply and I like to just hold shift while I have the opacity selected and use the down arrow keys to start to bring back that multiply a little bit. And you notice we're already starting to see our photo more. And it's got a little bit of that color to it and you can adjust the colors of both of these rectangles to get the exact color that you want. Um, but even in the 90s, even just bumping it down through the 90s helps you see the photo a lot more. So if I were to go to 85%, I can actually see the photo a lot better if I wanted to utilize this in a way where it's a little bit brighter than how dark that was. It's not just the background. I actually want it to be visible in my design. Now, the other thing too is I would, I would go back to those curves. You might wanna readjust how these curves affect your photo because that will adjust the brightness of it and how much you can see and how much of the photo falls off into the black or into the white highlights. I think that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you guys have any questions, definitely let me know for sure. Um, I just basically walked you through two different ways that I do color overlays in my design work. And I do this all the time, like every single day. I even add texture on top of these and everything like that. So if you're interested in any of that or me going any further with the color overlays, this is sort of just the quickest method that I had applying a rectangle, using a blending mode, and having that color pop through, usually with um, the black and white layer down there instead of having the color, because I think the color sort of muddies it up. You know, if you're throwing a big rectangle across here, it's 
you're, you're probably wanting the color of that rectangle, not necessarily all the colors in your image. If you guys have any questions, let me know. Subscribe for more tips and tutorials, and I'll see you guys next time.